This mm. is a video of my P55 board. I haven't done a video of uh, this board yet, as you might have seen. Um, it's a Gigabyte P55 UD5. Um, it's got 8 gigabytes of uh, Kingston HyperX Genesis grey memory, just 1600 megahertz. It's currently got a uh, Intel Xeon X3430 in, which isn't officially supported on the so uh, support list for this motherboard. As you can see down here, even though it does support the two faster versions of it, so I thought it would work. Um, I also have already tested uh, these two CPUs here, one of which is a i7 and the other of which is a i5, although you probably can't see them because it won't focus. There we go, that's the i7, uh, 875K and an i5-760. I've already tested those, but uh, I didn't film them because I've been having some problems with uh, the motherboard. The uh, two blue RAM slots don't work, and uh, it likes to corrupt Windows and hard drive a lot. So uh, that's the hard drive I'm using there, which is the same one I'm using for my uh, my uh, Z97 1150 board. So currently. Uh, I've only just put this CPU in so I'm just going to boot it stock and uh, see what happens. Alright then, we are in Windows as you can see here. It's, uh, it's stock and I haven't bothered turning anything off so it is under vaulting and uh, down clocking itself. I'm just going to run uh, Cinebench. Yeah, so it should be around the same performance as should be a bit below the i7 but being a Xeon it should overclock pretty well we will, we will see I've also ordered a uh, dual core 4 thread i5 as well which I think is a i5 650 maybe I don't know anyway you can see the temperatures there 50 degrees it's getting through it alright seems to be doing okay at stock speeds 2.6 gigahertz apparently it's boosting up a bit um, you can see that I have actually upgraded my uh, test bench which was a box um, and now I've just made it into a case I don't know why I think the other day I just decided um, to put this board in the in the case um, while I had those slot one boards out on the test bench and so I was actually looking for this board earlier and I couldn't find it and it's because it was hiding in this case which is quite funny so I just put the side panel on the other side so it doesn't short out on the carpet um, and then I'm using this as the test bench uh, the reason why I don't use cases as test benches normally is because the top of the case here just obstructs me getting down to all the wires for the uh, 8 pin and things like that and uh, it also reduces the airflow with there being hard drive cages and stuff in the way it's uh, quite annoying but not too much of a big deal it shouldn't hurt this chip very much right so it has just finished and it's got 300 points Um, that is all the way down here that is quite a bit slower than my i5 but then my i5 was clocked at 3 gigahertz stock and that got 682 so we'll see how far we can get on the uh, base clock with this it should boost up a bit I'm gonna leave Intel Turbo Boost on as well because it does have a bit of a higher multiplier that way so I'm going to try doing that first. It's reached 52 degrees, so it's running fairly cool. It was only running at 1.2 volts as well. So I'm going to go back into the BIOS, do a bit of overclocking, and see if I can improve this score. Right, so the first step up I've decided to take is uh, straight up to almost 3 gigahertz. It's 166. 
on the uh, bus speed. Uh, that's got me a score of 348, which isn't particularly good compared to my stock i5 results, which was also at 3 gigahertz. But I was running it uh, in real time without CPUZ and core temp open, so that'll make up a few points, I would have thought. Uh, as you can see here, it's still 59 degrees C was the maximum temperature during the run and uh, it's on 1.3 volts in the BIOS which isn't very much either so it's a pretty cool running chip um, it's not too bad I'll see how much further I can push it now I'm probably gonna be limited by my motherboard on this chip I would have thought considering its clock so low I'm gonna have to use a lot of bus speed to get it up to speed and it's not boosting any more than 18 on the multiplier unfortunately so uh, yeah we'll have to fix that so yeah we'll see how much higher it will go right then we're now at 3.2 gigahertz on the same voltage still still max temp of 59 degrees and we've got 374 so it is now slightly faster then the i5 was at stock if I just scroll down on here so that we get a few results the i5 at stock was there 362 um, and then this was 374 so it's the i5 at uh, 3.2 is actually a bit higher but that's probably because the RAM was a bit faster not too much of a big deal so next we're going to try 3.4 and that should get us just over the 400 uh, CB mark so uh, yeah we'll try that next right I've now just finished the run at 3.4 gigahertz and as you can see it's got over 400 points it's got 411 which is what I expected it managed to reach a whopping 48 degrees this time I'm pretty sure that's wrong but whatever um, so yeah carrying on um, we're all the way at uh, I think 189 on the bus speed at the minute so this next 3.6 3.5 gigahertz I'll try both if 3.6 doesn't work and we'll see if we can get over 200 on the bus speed right this is at 3.6 gigahertz now so that is a 18 times multiplier with a 200 uh, bus speed and um, 436 I've started taking screenshots of HW bot now which is why the layout's a bit different I've got my uh, three things up as you can see the memory is back up at 1600 megahertz so I don't know why on earth the camera is going really washed out all the time that's quite annoying anyway so that's 3.6 gigahertz we'll see how much higher it'll go um, and see what the limit of this board is on the uh, bus speed so as you can see I've actually uh, managed to skip 3.8 gigahertz I've enabled um, Intel Turbo Boost permanently so that the multiplier stays fixed at 19 instead of 18 which is the boost on all four cores I've uh, increased the CPU voltage a little bit to get this running uh, but it has scored 486 which uh, isn't a too bad score now it's getting uh, quite fast it's actually getting a, uh, a bit faster then a uh, 775 or 771 Xeon that I modded um, as you can see it's uh, slightly faster than the uh, i5 at the same speed and I'm gonna try and just get over that 500 mark which I did with the i5 not sure how much higher I got with the i5 I think that's the highest I got with the i5 was 505 so if I can get this up to five over 500 I'll be quite happy with that um, if not then it's not too bad because I am at 211 
on the front side bus, which is pretty high. So, uh, yeah, we'll we'll try going a bit higher and see if we can break that 500 barrier, see how it goes. Okay, so we have managed to break that uh, 500 point barrier, which I'm really pleased with. Got 507 points, which is actually faster than my i5. We are at uh, just over 4.2 gigahertz, as you can see. Um, a little bit more voltage required. Uh, 222 times 19. Uh, I've had to downclock the memory a bit as well, but I have tightened the timings up a little bit to uh, sort of balance that out. So I'm um, pleased with this chip now that it's got over 500 that means it's faster than my uh, fastest core 2 quad which got about 500 and i think it got exactly 500 actually uh, uh 4.4 something but that was with like a 500 front side bus speed on 775 so uh yeah that's got a much lower multiplier than this but I'm quite impressed with this chip to be fair that it's beaten my i5 considering it's only at 2.4 stock whereas my i5 is supposed to be at 2.93 gigahertz stock I think it is so it's quite impressive really so I'll carry on and see what the max I can get out of it is. So as you can see I didn't actually get <laughs> much further than before even though I've spent about I don't know half an hour maybe a little bit less 20 minutes uh, trying to get it higher but I've only managed to get up to 223 which isn't really very exciting um, but I've tried loads of things I think the RAM could be the problem but then again it could just be the max on the front side bus uh, I was getting freezing or not even posting it any higher than this um, so as you can see on the score chart thing down here, we are still a bit of a way off the uh, stock i7, but it's still faster than the i5 and over 400 points is good. I mean this CPU was 20 quid, um, whereas the i7 costs probably three times that if you can actually find a K1, I mean even a non-K is going to set you back 60-70 quid, which is three times as much. So the performance to price ratio is pretty good really. Um, I probably couldn't run it quite at this speed for just like 24-7. Um, but I could run it at like 4 gigahertz or whatever so it would be pretty close. Um, so yeah that pretty much concludes this video. I might do a little section at the end showing you around the BIOS my uh, final settings that I used. So uh, see ya. So we're here in the BIOS, I'm just going to show you the settings that I used for that last run that I did. So I've got an 18x multiplier um, with 223 um, base clock frequency. The QPI ratio is at 32 times. that gives a QPI speed of 7.13 GHz. Um, everything else on this screen is just on auto. Um, for advanced core features I've got Intel Turbo Boost permanently enabled, so which gives me a 19 times multiplier. Obviously, I've got all calls enabled, multi threading, I've got everything else disabled apart from the thermal monitor. All the C states are disabled and speed step. Um, memory wise, I'm just using a 6 times multiplier because uh, this board doesn't really like very fast RAM, so I'm just running it over 1333. Um, I am running timings of 88821, I haven't bothered setting any of us in a command rate of 1. Obviously the same on the other stick of RAM as well. Um, then for voltage wise, uh, I've got load line calibration on full because this board has terrible V droop and even with level 2 load line calibration which as you can see is the highest it goes to, it still has terrible V droop. I have the CPU core voltage at uh, 1.4125 just to keep it around that 1.4 mark but it still falls a bit under even with the load line calibration. 
QPI voltage of 1.32, which is a couple of steps before it turns pink. As I don't want to blow that up, I have actually got this uh, stupid little noisy fan blowing down. And they're all connected by heat pipes to the VRM and that QPI link, so uh, that's keeping that cool. Uh, PCH core 1.2 volts, and PLL voltage 1.92 volts. Uh, I'm having to run a pretty high RAM voltage to keep those timings as this RAM is terrible. So 1.76 volts on the RAM and everything else there is just uh, on automatic. These settings here I've just got um, not disabled. Nothing's very exciting to see there. So I'm going to do a few more benchmarks now probably. Um, and see what I can get in those. As you can see the CPU temperature is quite high because I'm running quite a high voltage. But... I think it'll probably only be getting to about 70-75 degrees, although I haven't bothered looking. As you can see that little fan is actually spinning at nearly 5000 RPM and the CPU fan spinning at 1600, which is uh, pretty quiet really. Most of the noise that you can hear is from that horrible little thing down there on the hard drive. So uh, that concludes uh, this video really, so uh, see you next time.